Welcome back, everyone. Going into the second half of Court of Swords, I can happily report that Ollie pooped during the break. <laughs> Good job, Ollie. That uh, spring is outside. coming early. Yes, outside. It was great. It was glorious. <laughs> the neighbors, however, sternly watched through their windows, so I only saw a shadow. It was quite horif horrific. <laughs> yes, that's the word I'll use. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was a in an intense Excellent. eight minute break. Yeah, <laughs> Adam, please. So. Yeah, so so you've all you've all opened your uh, you've opted into the uh, the the lawkeepers sharing of your minds. Uh, so what I need everyone to do when you participate in this particular uh, endeavor, I need everybody to roll two six sided dice and add whatever your wisdom modifier is. Uh, if it's a penalty, it's you subtract. Uh, but I need uh, I need two d six plus or minus your uh, your modifier, and then I'll tell you what the results mean, and we'll make some decisions. 11. Okay. So 10 pillars. Do you mean like my, my modifier under Minus. saving throws or just. No, just whatever your, your flat wisdom bonus is. So not bonus. Negative two is what you're saying. So for you, be yeah, 2d6 minus two. Oh, okay. So you're not. Oh, even if we have. um, Like me and Berg both have resilient. Does that not modify it? Yeah. Mm. What does resilient do for you? Uh, here I'll paste it. It does. Yeah, that. well, that's why I was asking. We gained proficiency in it. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I chose proficiency in in wisdom for saving throws kind of stuff because of. I think in this case, because it's not technically a saving throw, um, I will give you an extra plus one to whatever you normally would have. Okay, had. so it's a negative. Uh, so it's a negative one then instead of yeah, negative, negative one for Berg and whatever Mahari. What's your two d six? Just flat. Okay. So two d six minus one for me. All right. Good luck, Berg. I'll let you roll first to see how fucked we are. <laughs> I'm so nervous. You can do it, buddy. <laughs> hey! Hot damn, bad. man. Hot damn. All right. Now and then Maharib. The one one up, Max. Oh, yeah, you're going to be very is. happy with that. Okay, Maharib, big, big feds here. All right, so oh, here you go. God, I needed that. So... For ten pillars for Berg and for Ramus, uh, you're gonna get to choose two of these three things. Uh, and for uh, Maharib, n you get none of them. Great. So the three things are: you glean an insight from somebody else in the Gestalt. Now it can be the dwarf, but it could also be another member of the party. And you, as a player, just get to ask them a question, uh, and then they have to answer you honestly. So you learn something about another member of the party. All three of you get to choose that as an option. The second one is you protect a secret, right? So you can pick something and say, nobody can learn this. This is, this is the secret I'm protecting. It's off the table. And then the one third one is your body is unaffected by any lasting side effects. You get two of the three. So gain an insight, protect a secret, body side effects. Uh, Man, for you, Maharib. That to take a part of, right? I can't <laughs> yeah, right? wait to choose my two. So for you, your body will be affected by the side effects. You can protect none of your secrets and you gain no special insight. Uh, your mind is a transmitter, not a receiver in this case. Yeah. So can you read the third uh, one again. Sure. So glean an insight, protect a secret. Your body is unaffected by the side effects. Well, Adam, I would like to choose all three, please. <laughs> this is, you can choose none this of is them. tough now because because yeah. as a player i know that jp has failed all of those things and he's an open book to uh -huh. brass eyes which means uh -huh. it makes it difficult then as a player to as a player no, no, now I remember would, so here's here's the thing max max so when i say and this is a great great clarification when i say you protect a secret i mean you protect the piece of information no matter who knows it so Berg, yeah, so if you choose good. for yours okay. the location gotcha. of the embers, that, is a that very protects that information. Yeah. Because remember, you all you all share a mind, right? And while Maharib is a, a leaky hole in the side of your mind boat, Berg, you can plug that hole to make sure that specific information doesn't get out. I wonder what I'm gonna protect. Yeah, right. So and then so yeah what so, okay, so uh what, what two, two what two things what two things does everybody everybody want except my harib sorry my harib thankfully my harib a lot of your secrets you can't remember them so no one else can get at them either that's <laughs> true mm -hmm. so it 
for me, it then becomes, um, do I want to protect the side effect against my body? Is this a, yeah. Do you want to, do you want to learn, do you want to learn something? Uh, or do you want to avoid whatever physical side effects there are of this process? I feel like it makes most sense because Berg is, is best. Pluses are, or his best con contributions to the group is the fact that he's strong. So if there's a physical side effect that ends up staying with him, it would make most sense to protect against that and then let the others potentially gain. Yeah, I'd do side effects in mm. secret for you, Berg. Side effects in secret for Berg, yeah. Okay. And then side right. effects in oh. lean for everyone else. So Berg. Berg. But I have no horse. And then yet, you know, I'm, ten pillars. What I'm do you? What book. do you think? Um. <clears throat> Do we know that Burgers is, is, do we know that that happens? Because I think that everybody knows everything because you're all sharing one mind, right? We're like, the mind boat. To the point where, yeah, when you, when you open, that's right, when you all get in the mind boat, uh, you, you merge your consciousness together, you and the, the dwarven law keeper. Um, okay. And so, yeah, you're aware of, you're aware of like everybody else's results and kind of how all that stuff. All gotcha. That stuff. Okay. Because I was going to say, like, if we have to, like, just blind reveal them, like, three of us would be like, protect the secret of the embers or whatever. <laughs> no. So, you know that that, no, I mean, you, I understand it, you I don't know that Berg is protecting that, but there is a, um, that, yeah. there's like a missing yeah. tooth where, you know, some information should be there, but you can just okay. feel the hole. So. Okay. <clears throat> um, I will do, uh, protect from the, the side effects. I will take that. And I will take a question, an insight. So you have no secrets to protect. Okay. All right. And then Ramus? I'll do the side effects, and yep. uh, I'll ask a question as well. An insight. Okay. Well, All right. So Berg, um, you... I'm going to change. I'm sorry. You want to change yours? No, it's well, okay. Yeah. What do, you want, what do you want to do instead? Because um, it's, it's weird because... I'm thinking about secrets that I've I've acquired since I've joined the group, but I have court of uh, court of uh, coins oh, secrets. Yeah, yeah. That you have state I need secrets to protect. Yeah, I need yeah. To these protect. are this is a foreign this is a foreign power, and if you accidentally reveal like a weakness in the border yeah. defenses, the dwarves might be like interesting. We need to go for a little trip up north. Bye. Right. Like yeah. That's exactly. that's a good point. Yeah. So I was just thinking in the now and not in the past. So I will have to protect uh, anything pertaining to the court of coins. If that's a, that's a pretty a, big that's a pretty big chunk of your brain. Uh, you could protect you could protect like state relevant like defense secrets or like intelligence secrets like that like that kind of stuff. But not like I just block the court of coins out of my head completely. What if I spend both my points on that? <laughs> no 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 yeah, but i think i like i get what you're going for and i think you can still get it it's not okay. just like like they'll get a bunch of information right they'll know where your friends live in the city and they'll know about the party you went to before you left and you'll you know like they know things about the right. court of coins but they won't get at the like state secret stuff right okay um <clears throat> then i will protect those <clears throat> and uh yeah i'll protect those and protect my Protect those, protect my body. So I guess I get no okay. question. Right. He's going to show okay. us like, look, I'll show you our preparations. It's just a dick butt. Just rely on my actual <laughs> skills to get the answers I want, I guess. Okay, so Ramus, uh, I'll give you what everybody gets, and then we'll talk about Maharib will suffer the physical side effects, and then we'll go from there. So, all right, so the uh, the the dwarf shares with you in a series of like sort of sweeping visions. Now the law keeper hasn't seen all this stuff themselves, right? They haven't seen anything cause they don't have any eyeballs. Um, but other dwarves come here with intelligence reports. They, they open their mind to the law keeper, the law keeper records them. And, and so you're seeing this from, you know, a thousand different points of view somewhere below Manam Ekbal, right? Somewhere deep below the, the city, the dwarves uncovered a vein of a strange greenish black metal. Uh, they have found this vein of void metal somewhere down deep below the uh, deep below the caverns in the deepest layers. They've been mining it 
and they have been attempting to smith it into weapons and armor. And for the most part, it hasn't gone very well. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, just people straight up dying, a lot of necrotizing, people missing limbs, uh, people going insane trying to work with this stuff. But now the way was shut. And now it is open. Right. The axe has given them some kind of insight to turn this vein into uh, something else. And so their plan is to uh, to use this stuff to make armor and weapons to arm themselves and to build an army uh, that can now defend the uh, defend the city that can defend Mount Amekbal. So they're not afraid because they're like, we have the enemy's weapon. Uh, it, it works for us. Uh, and now they have the secrets to do that uh, because of the axe. So that is their plan, right? Training, protection. The priests have been weaving anti, like anti undead spells. They have no intent to march on the enemy. Their goal is a hundred percent self defense. Yes, defense. But but soon, within a few months of forging, they will have void steel armed dwarven warriors uh, that they can use to uh, to protect themselves. Um, so that is that is their plan. So that we is what all they, learn that, that is what they want. <laughs> Yes. Well, yeah, everybody, everybody sees. Yep. Everybody sees those visions. So basically that is the base level thing. They're, they're being like Gungans, essentially. <laughs> what? Yeah, they're basically. Yeah, they're. I mean, kind of. He's Explain saying that. like, hold on. What? Uh, he's boss Nass. Them and the Nabu form a symbian circle. They don't understand that yet. And so they're just turtling up and using their. We saw no need to fight in a dead war. Essentially. It, it's a good analogy. It so holds. who's Jar Jar then? Me? Yes. No, Adi, Adi Kur is Jar Jar. <laughs> no. Because she's the dwarf you saved. Well, Adi, 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 is, Adi, Adi, Adi Kur is Jar Jar. Gungans, aka dwarves, no liking outsiders. So, yes. It's true. That tracks. Yeah. So I'm a Jedi. Yep. <laughs> yes. I mean, I think Ramus is Obi-Wan in this case. Okay. Uh, and then there's no real analogy. Uh, Ten Pillars is C-3PO, obviously, in this analogy, right? Right. right. Uh, I don't I'm think Mace we have Windu. a young Anakin Skywalker. Maybe you're Mace Windu. I'm yeah. Mace Windu. We did it. <laughs> we made it. And Berg is Natalie Portman. Perfect. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Just so everyone's Right, it clear. fits, right? Berg is Natalie Portman. It's like pretty... Pretty hot, but not all that smart. Sorry, Natalie. Uh, all right, so let's uh, or one of those. Ivy so did Berg, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, Berg is baby Yoda. Um, so okay. Uh, so Berg, you have chosen to insulate from the others your uh your your secret, right? Of like you got to keep them keep safe the village. You're like I don't know, and they they probe your mind looking for that information, but they don't they don't find it. Uh, and then ten pillars, you protect, uh, you protect all of that. So, I think probably as part of the vast tsunami of information that washes over your gestalt hive mind, uh, Maharib, you are granted a vision, kind of by accident. You are granted a vision of um, there is a Goliath here. You are not the only one. There's another Goliath here. <laughs> uh, he is being imprisoned in their in their cells. Uh, you see a vision of him. Uh, so we see this Goliath and he is he's sitting in a cell. We can see the the stone walls around him and uh, there are scratch marks on the wall. He's been here a long time. Uh, he has like a long, a long beard tattoos across his forehead and down his back. And we see him probably like doing push ups or something like keeping himself busy in a prison cell somewhere. Uh, so that's something that you see. Um, so that that is a that is a vision, uh, a vision that you see Berg. You see something that I think you recognize and everybody sees these, but they're aimed at or they, they're like if the stream of time is washing over you, these are things that get caught on you because of your nature. So, Berg, you see a long time ago, uh, you see a group of dwarves. There's a, a, a triumvirate of them. You see three of them. One of them is the lawbringer before he got all the tubes in him. Uh, he's leaning on a cane. He's still got a long beard and then two younger dwarves. And the three of them are kneeling. Uh, so they're 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 down on their knees. They have their head down, and in front of them there is a group of orcs. Uh, the orcs have traveling supplies with them, uh, so there's maybe like 
you see a group of a half dozen of them, but then behind them gathered is like a, an entire tribe's worth of orcs, right? And these three, these three orc, uh, the three dwarves are kneeling to the the leaders of these these orcs, and the orcs are kind of looking at each other like and nodding, and then they they leave. They go taking you know wagons and and gold and like stuff with them uh, as they go. So you you see this memory of the uh, of the 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 people of this uh, this place, um, oh. and. I think 10 pillars, since you didn't ask anything specific. Um, <laughs> I think you see a uh, someone dressed quite a lot like you. Uh, she has like the uniform of, of the court of sword or of the court of coins, um, the same bureau you're a part of, right? The like foreign service or whatever. And she has her hands shackled behind her and she is standing in front of what, what is obviously a judge. And she's like pleading her case before the uh the dwarf like bangs a, a gavel and she's dragged away uh so you see that uh in your in your mind but ramus since you chose to glean an insight instead of just being shown something you get to choose you get to navigate these uh streams of memory the streams of time uh and uh guide your your mental ship towards uh some some form of uh, information what what do you want to know and of whom Hmm. I guess I'm looking yeah, no, for. This, I was gonna say this can be this can be like factual information, like when did a thing happen, where is a thing, what is going on, whatever, right? But it can also be directed at the other members of your party, and you can ask because you're asking their players, like as Dan, and then Ramus learns this thing. So, like, you could ask Maharib what it would take to convince him to join Harmony, or. You know, like you've you've got lots of options because you're touching their minds in a way that that you never would have the act, the ability to otherwise. Yeah. I my mind goes to that first, like figuring out what Mahari would it would take, but my my duty comes before that and overtakes it. And yeah. I probe his the 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 keeper's mind about what would convince him to not use this weapon. Is there some fear or something that would make them not want to use yeah. it? So uh, dwarves in general have a tendency towards what I will call uh, Oppenheimerism, where they know that what they're doing is very dangerous and bad. And they'll probably say something profound and meaningful about how dangerous and bad it is, but they're not going to stop. Right. It's like, it is a shame that we must use this horrible weapon. Oh, well, let's do it. <laughs> right. So it's not about making them afraid. It's not about telling them like, this is a bad idea. It's about giving them a replacement. If you had something else to offer them, if you said like, here, don't use the cursed steel use this instead. You have something equally uh, valuable or powerful for them that would convince them to leave it behind. Right. But if you just say like, it's dangerous, they're like, yeah, dude, swords are dangerous. That's how it works. Okay. Fools. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, that, that whole, that whole exchange crosses back and forth. And I think for you, Ramus, since you didn't, you didn't choose to, to protect any of your secrets. Um, what we see is first the, I mean, we recognize that this is from the perspective of the, of the law keeper. We see Ramus, right? But it's clear that the law keeper is not looking at you. We can see within you the glowing shape of your, uh, your cloud spirit, right? Of your Hun and your Poe. We see the kind of faintly greenish replacement soul you were given. Uh, and that is what becomes clear to the law keeper. Uh, the truth of Ramus's soul uh, is something that 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 he learns, and in exchange, because you're doing the you're doing the 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 intercerebellum mambo, uh, ten pillars, Berg and Maharib. If you weren't already aware, uh, or if you were aware with your brain, now your heart and soul understand that Ramus is an aberration. Uh, Ramus should not exist. Uh, his soul is false. Uh, and um, and a, a mere replica of a true soul. 
I think me and Bernie uh, and, that and that becomes, that, but 10 pillars didn't. I already right? knew that. I know yeah. so much about exactly, Yes, yeah. It's well, like, I already Bernie. know he has a third ball. It's one of those things. I just know. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know well, exactly. And for you, for you, Ramus, it's not, or for a Berg, it's not new information. You're like, yes, I know. And I have come to terms with it. And that's fine. But 10 pillars, some new information for you. <laughs> Ramus is a, literally a soulless monster. Um, with now, some do kind I of know, false uh, prosthetic soul. Do I know who it was furnished by, or do I just see a makeshift, like, a cobbled together soul? Oh, yeah, no, you know that it's it's a gift of, it's a gift of the Mara. You can feel the, oh, the great man. green worms, like, oh, all of that. It feels man. like the axe it has the same that, emotional yep. and energy resonance. Yep. Yeah. Does he so, know it's connected to the this promise too. that I made? Uh, no, but you, you know that it's connected to the axe. It has the same, the... The hand that forged that axe, so too forged the the glittering thing that oh, dwells within Ramus and, and treats They don't soul. know that. Everybody knows all of that now. Oh fuck! Okay. You know what's <laughs> what's interesting too is it, it's it's if you think about it in context, Ramus was basically like, "Hey, don't use that void thing," and then just refracted yep. back was like, "Bitch, you're made of void." <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. That's right. Exactly. We look like fucking hypocrites. So all of that information flows in all directions. Uh, everybody is everybody is made aware of that. Uh, and then uh, Maharib, and it's great because you already took a bunch of damage. Yeah. Uh, first of all, the effect uh, further like weakens you. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna roll some more some more damage. This is psychic damage, not necrotic though. Now that was Maharib's, or excuse me, that was Ramus Krill's turn, right? We haven't gotten to Maharib yet. Well, I don't have anything. Ma and that's the thing, exactly. Maharib is a bit of an empty okay. vessel. So the dwarf learns everything that Maharib remembers, but doesn't know any of Maharib's past because probably a bit disappointed. Actually, he was probably yeah. absolutely the best person to fail the, those saves. Yep. So he all doesn't of, have your it, forgotten secrets. So Maharib doesn't have any memory of the the axe and what it's for or anything. No, all of that is still like available. Yeah, that gets that information shared, yeah. is, is out there. Yeah. Okay. So like I know a that bag of yeah, chips okay. that looks like it's full, yeah. but it's about like 75% whoa, air. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so we know whoa. that you but we know that you're whoa. uh you're whoa. an agent of the void sent to protect whoa. Ramus. Do we know that? <laughs> mm, whoa. I don't know that it's that clear. Um okay. I think it's it's because the the law keeper and nobody nobody really turns their full attention on that fact but we know the axe is connected to ramus's soul right the two of them were forged by the same hand uh we know that maharib is bound to ramus in some kind of protector protectee bodyguard situation right okay. uh we know that maharib has corrupted himself with void blood uh in the way that it, maharib is to the body what ramus is to the soul right yeah. and uh, all of that information becomes clear but like there's so much missing, uh, and we we don't have answers. We just have and truths I feel like about a now. Tube of Pringles, Max. Okay, <laughs> not some fucking potato chips. Some you got to okay, leave so some room to get your hand in there. For a that is seventy five percent empty. Pringles. Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah. You, know, so you mean like the bag? You could analogy? go like side and side, and it would shift from side to side. Right? Okay, but so you're not, saying you could like yeah, you could make it look yeah. like it's okay. I yeah. got you. I get what you're saying. Yeah. You can say there's more structure so, there. Some You're purple Pringles because I'm Mace Windu. Don't forget it. All right. Okay. <laughs> right. And I, I think this is a great this is a great analogy, right? Is that Ramus is a, a a body a body well and true, but a soul that is false. And Maharib is a true soul with a false body, right? So there's there's that. Um yeah, and all of that information kind of just like floats through everyone's mind. We all learn it at once. And at the end, as the as the merge finishes, uh, Maharib, you're gonna take Hit me. some damage. Oh man, what's the, I'm curious about these. So side you take effects. twenty psychic damage. Okay. Uh, as the process, and it's it's the pulling away, it's the separating. Everybody like kind of drops yeah. to their knees or like stumbles yeah. as the the gestalt is removed, um, and you it it winds back. Uh, but for you, Maharib, that that is like pulling out uh, a barb, right? So it takes some of your mental ability with it, and you're stunned for the time being. There are there are longer ongoing problems that are going to to occur. You can feel like for everybody else, the barb came out clean. For you, something broke off and is like lodged in your psyche somewhere. You can feel it, right? It's like a like a splinter. 
I need to have um, a cleanse. So is, that, is kind of what you're saying? Maybe something something broke off in inside of the wound that it left behind. Great. So uh, we will attend to that sometime uh, later. But are you making a note okay, of that, or should I? I am writing the. I'm writing that down. Okay. So that I can bring it up again later. So okay. So that happens. Uh, everybody everybody feels that. Um, and uh, once you return to kind of the staging area where everyone's mind is like loosely connected. Uh, the, real quick. The, yeah. 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 Um, the image that I saw was someone, uh, a dwarf kneeling before a tribunal or something and getting judged. Oh, no, it wasn't a dwarf. It was a human. Uh, it was an agent of whatever like bureau you, you belong to. Similar to you. Uh, okay. Being, yeah, someone dressed similar to your uniform. And she was sentenced by, uh, I guess the in this case, the law wielder. Um, okay, and so and I didn't recognize uh, yeah. them, or they're no face or something. Um, make a history check for me. Okay. Mm, boom, twenty six. Okay, uh, you don't recognize the woman, but the uniform is like, like I'm like two hundred years old. Like okay. it looks like your uniform, but it's styled differently. Nobody else would really notice, but you're like, wait a second, those epaulets went out of style like a hundred years ago, and like those boots, we don't use those anymore. <laughs> yeah, so you recognize it's an old, it's an old uh, memory uh, from the from the the archives. And so when all of that is withdrawn, when you return to that that staging area, you feel again the the mind of the of the lawkeeper uh, touching yours, and they uh, they say. Um, as you have seen, so have we. The metal we discovered, you wield it as an axe. This power, the void, it could be useful. You understand this as we do. We are allied in this. Right? So what he's, what he's saying is like, yeah, see, we're all on the same page. We're making cool swords and spears and armor out of this stuff. You've got an axe made out of it. You got tiefling blood. You know, your soul is from the void. Good. We're all on the same page. Do I know that this axe is like imbued with something or it do? Is this the same for all void metal? Do I know that? No, you don't know. <clears throat> okay. Uh, While well, I'm on the ground, probably like throwing up or some shit then for the next couple of seconds. <laughs> yeah, right. All reeling. Yeah. Confused. So if someone wants um, the stage, feel free to hop on. Yeah, so they uh the the law the law uh, lawkeeper uh, says um uh we would continue to dig. There are those among the priest caste who have seen visions, an entryway of sorts, a tunnel, a passage. We would find it, and what is beyond. That's what he wants. You're playing into his hand. Surely you've seen how the weapon's been affecting my friend. A dark whisper in his ear at all times. Those how do who you, wield the blow. How, sorry, how do you I just the Remus, Remus, so see. Say that again. Sorry, I didn't hear you, Zeke. Hmm. How do you fight it, Ramus Krill? You have life, walk around, speak, cast spells with a soul that is forged from the same material. How do you fight it? You have to fight it. I don't have to fight it because souls are a lie, my friend. They are not what you think they are. They are like a battery that gives life to the broken shell they left us with. Heaven made us like this. Mara have figured out their tricks. I don't feel corruption. I don't feel anything out of the ordinary. Just a power source. 
I have been without a soul. And I too was the same for a while. I was myself with and without the soul. That should tell you something, my friend. With or without the soul, we are our, ourselves. It's like a drug we have to keep going on to survive. They've made us slaves to ourselves. Is any of this a deception, Dan? No. Yeah, right. It's just it's a it's a peculiar way of looking at things. This idea that like we are uh, we are addicted to the idea of religion, right? We are addicted to heaven's proposals of destiny and their story of the soul. But perhaps we don't truly need it. Perhaps all we need is a power source, regardless of where it comes from. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So. Would I be that far off in in making the the correlation between your goal and your soul? If we were to slough off, deny that we need the gods, if heaven were to fall, you seek to prove that you don't need heaven to power this battery. I would argue that we are like a plant and heaven a roof blocking the sun. Uh huh. And you've had no negative effects. Nothing has forced your hand on anything because of this soul that you've been provided with. The only thing that was forced upon me was the choice of whether I would accept it or fade away into nothing. I accepted it. Because the other op- other option was to fade away into dust. The Mara, in their arrogance, value choice above all else. They don't like... They want you to choose to worship them, to follow them, and I don't choose to. I will take their think- greatest gift and use it against them. What do you, Ramus Krill, think is the reason they chose to furnish someone such as you with a soul? Someone who, on, in a two-minute conversation, I could already tell that you were going to go your own way and to hell with all else. Why you? Why not someone, like, more malleable? interesting question well to be i think part of it is how many people are there without souls their numbers were limited and not that and two the gods like to play with me like a pawn in the little game and they discard the little piece and they forget about me And slowly and surely, I'm moving across the board to the very end where I will become the queen. (laughs) So your answer to that question is their choices were limited. The The real answer is I don't really know. I don't know why they exactly chose me. But I am the only person that I know of that doesn't that didn't have a soul at one point. You understand how this must look. We were shown visions where we saw the soul you're provided with and the protector of that soul is Maharib 
all gifts, the acts, the soul given by the denizens of the void. Indeed. Why would they do that? Because I think the Mara are as arrogant as heaven is blind. They they might have a plan. They might think that humans are controllable and that we will do what they want. But once again, they misunder they miscalculated humanity we cannot be controlled we are not we are not a thing that they can influence like a mindless zombie or a soulless husk i think i was an experiment to see if they could i don't know what their ultimate goal was but i can promise you there's no influence or malice or whispering in my ear as our friend here has been dealing with. One more thing. I am always open book to you, Ten Pillars. You may ask anything. Well, this question is for both you and Maharib. How can you expect the dwarves to not use weapons that we ourselves use. The gifts of the Mara, the gifts of the Void. You say those weapons are terrible. Look what they've done to my friend, but yet he will not give it up under any circumstances. You see the hypocrisy there. Mm-hmm. And I'm working on that. I want to find a way to sever this bond between Maharib and me so he's free to choose what he wants. What would happen if we took the axe away somehow? If there was a way to do it? I don't know if... if Maharib can answer or whatever if he's still people on the floor. But. I mean, Maharib can, yeah. hear, Maharib can hear you. And I think probably that's the only part of the conversation you really hear, right? Is what if we took the axe away? Oh, yeah. No, that I like probably spit blood or something on my mouth on the ground. <laughs> I'd, li- <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Arrogance aside and skill and strength and power. Do you even know what would happen if we took the if the axe were to leave your possession? He would not be happy. Who? They saw like they know who I. At least when I call him by his name, they'll know that, right? We got a general idea of what's going on, but I don't think we know specifics. Okay, then I I think um, so. You say who, and I go, (laughs) I I don't know his name. Great worm serpent. I'm not sure. It's why Ramus lives. It's why I have this axe. You saw him. Or a version of him, whatever. What would he do to you? Uh, What would he do to me? I don't even want to ponder that. It's strange seeing you afraid. It's afraid of the unknown. Maharib, I I know what it's like to not know what will happen tomorrow. Because at any second, whatever is holding you here could fade away at any part, at any moment. When I was without a soul, every day was like that, where would this be my last? The gods let me live one more day in this shell. If you want to be free of that bond, you have to me. 
I can help you release it, maybe. You see, Ramus, it has nothing to do with me, but with you. If you live or die, that's what commands me. If I pass away, he'll find another. That's why I'm not willing to give up this axe. Have you tried to take control of it? Dominate it for once. You're the strongest man I know, Maharib. Bend it to your will for once. Why I'm here. Single tear slides down. I know. Yeah. I thought about <laughs> as, he looks at his, like as, as he looks at his belt, yeah. he's like, what are you fucking talking about? Like the, the light, like the, the light flickers or something, and we see the belt like illuminate for a split second. <laughs> You're the strongest man yeah. I know. What about Berg? Is Berg not? No? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, it's, it's why I'm here right now and why you're still asking me these questions that I can answer. I cast heal on you and tell you, get up, stand and control it. Uh, I think, I mean, I start to stand, but Ramus, it, doesn't work like that. No, it does. Choice is the most powerful thing to the Mara. Choose to command it. Ramus, what would you have me do? Tell it that it serves you now. Uh, I'll close my eyes, put my hand on my, the, the blade, and then think like, no, this is a a deeper moment. Um, I think I reach for a, a knife or a dagger or something and like cut my hand, mm -hmm. put blood on the blade and I'll do as Ramus suggest. Okay. So you're going to attempt to assert control over the ax instead of treating it as a, uh, like a thing that has uh, influence over you instead of asking it questions and all that. You're like, all right, time to put on time to put on the leash. You're, you're, I'm in charge of you now. That's, yeah, I, that's I what's going to happen. I think I say, like, I'm your master now. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, so you hear uh, you hear a familiar voice. And maybe you've forgotten the last time this voice speak, spoke to you. But there is a sense of, like, deja vu uh, nonetheless. And the voice whispers, like, scales sliding over the surface of your mind. Is everyone uh, hearing you this? You hear... Or just me? Uh, yeah, because they're they're still connected yeah. to you. Yeah. So everyone <laughs> hears this. Everyone hears this voice, and I think the the law the lawbringer like stiffens when he hears the voice. Like, uh oh, what are you doing? And you you hear this slithering voice. It is unmistakably for all of you the voice of the great green worm. Um, so just being mentally like uh. uh Opened up to this voice. Everybody needs to make wisdom saves. Uh, you you well, open your mind to the Mara. I want to like. I, I'm sure probably some other people in the the um. What do you call it? The mind group. Mind or the boat. Gestalt. The mind boat. Yeah, the mind boat. <laughs> I, the mind boat. It is the Gestalt. Want to, like yeah. uh, before like just want to let you know my Irish intentions. Like I sure, like yeah. reach out with my mind if I can, and try and fucking help Mahari battle this fucking thing. And I think this is our best chance to do it to fucking gather. <laughs> yeah, okay, I mean, yeah, I, I help, dig it. I, guess. I mean, if, okay. if I'm going to have yeah, to take right? a wisdom save mechanically anyway. <laughs> Everybody's got to make the wisdom save first. Might as, as well have the, something at stake here, yeah. Yeah, as the, the fear uh, and, and pain like wash over you of, of having like your mind open to the, the Mara. Uh, so yeah, it's everybody. Like we talk shit about dad, and now dad's coming home from work. <laughs> I'll roll for the law, uh, the law lawbringer here. Ooh, that was pretty good. Iceberg. Okay. I think I. All right. Well, Ten pillars had eight. But. So everybody's gonna take some damage. We're gonna start. We're gonna start there. Uh, give me one second to figure out how much. The funny thing about this is, you had to know. This is all like Adam's got to come up with this shit on the spot because <laughs> yeah. no one saw this shit coming. 
I have some general ideas and, and we'll, we'll get to that, but yes, mechanically I can, I gotta, I gotta wing it here. So yeah, first of all, touching the, touching the morrow with your, your soul, it's dangerous for you. Uh, so everybody takes, uh, some psychic damage. Uh, let me roll. <laughs> and then, okay, here we go. Am I cleared of exhaustion uh, by the way from heal Ramus? Does that clear exhaustion? Um, hold on. I'm going to double check as Ramus's representative. Yes. <laughs> no, just lawyer. blindness, deafness, and diseases. Okay. All okay. Right. Max, can you cite right, a page so, number for that? No, I cannot. <laughs> if How many levels do you a... have, Mari? What? How many levels do you have? Oh, le I have one level one. of exhaustion. Yeah. Does that mean you have to So take... not, not saving throws, it's skill checks yes. uh, oh, that, okay. are, okay. that are disadvantaged, okay. basically. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. So, uh, first of all, uh, psychic damage. If you got a, um, a 20 or higher, you take half of this. So me all and right. 10 fillers. Jesus shit on my mouth. <laughs> <Ow>. Jesus. <laughs> so 67 psychic damage, uh, or I just love this thing. 30 Z memoirs coming soon. <laughs> Z or 30, 33. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So you, you, everybody like just, and I think probably, <laughs> I think probably the, the, um, the law, the law bringer shuffles this damage off. So doesn't take it himself, but one of his, one of his little servitors just dies, just turns to the, to dust ages super quickly. We see his skin shrivel mm. uh, and then just slough off and his bones just tumble to the ground as all of that force is shoved into this one servitor. Uh, everybody else, you get nosebleeds. You hear a horrible high pitched like whine in your head. Uh, everybody is like staggering uh, because of this, this assault. And you, you hear uh, this is directed at Mahari, but everybody understands it. You hear the the voice of the great green worm come uh, come through, and he uh, I think probably just directly addresses uh, first Mahari, but then realizing what's going on, addresses sort of the group. Uh, and so you hear this voice. So it has come to this. Very well. Let us see what you are made of, and you. Uh, you feel, and again, it's all, it's all happening in, in the sense of like dread and emotion, right? You feel the coils of this, this metaphorical thing closing around you, uh, attempting to, to basically assert its dominance over you, right? To say like, no, no, you're my servant. Right. Uh, so Maharib, you are, you are attempting to, uh, to fight back, uh, right. To, to assert control over the weapon. Is that the plan? Yeah, I had to think about that for a second. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> only because okay. like, like right. the, the idea of power entering into Mahrib's mind is like, well, wait a minute now. If he's trying to like give me some more power, maybe that's not the worst idea. That's how we got here to begin with. Tell him, so. tell him you feel bad for him, and he'll never know love. Okay, all right, I'll let him know. <laughs> I'll let him okay, know. so uh, in this case, I think that you can choose. You can choose from a handful of uh, of abilities to continue this contest, right? So you can, uh, you can roll, uh, let me look at the, let me look at the skills here. Can we do a, uh, <laughs> can we do like a acad academia, uh, <laughs> quiz? Cause I have six history. We could roll there. I could try to spout some lore, you know? So goes. I think, I think in this case, we're looking at, you can choose to make a wisdom save, right? To endure and, and in that way, continue to, to press through. Um, you can make a perception check to like learn weaknesses uh, of your of your enemy. Um, and this is all Mahari making these tests, but everybody else can. If they have ways to help, they can try. Um, yeah, so you can look for say. you can look for weaknesses in, in its armor with perception. You can endure with a, a wisdom save. Uh, you can make a, a persuade role or uh, an intimidate role to try to assert assert dominance. Um, the trick is, is that Maharib is, a, is sort of the perfect patsy because he's physically very strong and mentally and, and emotionally kind of weak. So this is this is a very hard struggle for him. Basically, the the great green worm it puts his metaphorical boot on your neck and it's like, get up. I dare you. Try it. Right. Uh, 
uh, and you were trying to fight back with your mind, not with your body. Uh, and he chose you because you're you're strong in body, not in mind. Right. So uh, where do you want to start? Which of which of those? Uh, so it's wisdom save, perception, uh, and then persuasion. Um, I'll start with a weakness to try to find a weakness that then I'll make. First, we find <laughs> weakness, then we attack. That's that's how the meme goes. OK. <laughs> All right. So as the. Uh, yeah, as the coils of the serpent close around you, uh, metaphorically around your soul, uh, you attempt to you attempt to f- to find a way out. You attempt to find a weakness of this this creature, something it has overlooked or not seen. Uh, you all is feel it's... this. You can feel that Maharib is locked in this conflict. Uh, who wants to be now? Remember, if you choose to get involved in each role, you are yourself uh, exposed to danger. So if Maharib fails, anyone who helps also suffers. Um, but you can offer up if you have abilities, uh, you can just help and grant advantage. If you have spells that you want to cast, all of those can be used to um, help Maharib poor struggle dwarf, with the axe. This motherfucker thought he was going to get free information, and now he's talking to the great worm guard and just like, oh So here's God. here's what, and because you're all connected, <laughs> what's happening is the great green worm has a lot of tendrils, right? He can do a lot at once. So while he's focused on Maharib, some other smaller part of his mental energy is probing the defenses of the dwarf. Yeah. looking to get into his brain. And as a result, all of the other shit that's been going on in here, really, when it comes down to it, like whether or not you win this conflict, there's a secondary fear that the lawbringer is exposed to the forces of the Mara, which would yeah. be very bad for them. Which also actually kind of works in our favor because he's understanding the power that the Mara have. So unless maybe. he loses um, control. Yeah. So could be. yeah, I mean, generally when you show, when you show a dwarf, like, there's a horrible source of power. He's gonna be like, "How do we get a muzzle on that worm? Like, we gotta, we gotta make yeah, that our true. worm." Yeah, we'll, gonna, we'll get there a later. Saddle for that worm. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Get my maker um, hooks. Let's so go. Berg, Berg is gonna shout. I'm not actually gonna shout it because one, I can't remember all the whole phrase, but he's gonna, um, shout like, "You're stronger than than this." He's using zealous presence. He's basically using that scream, but he's screaming that, and then he says the, the Molva Fredro, you know, all that shit. Um. Break free, break free of your binds and live strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D- D- Dwarven, this is what this is what orcish cheerleading looks like, right? So yeah, Berg, Berg bellows the the you the are shout strong. Of, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So Berg bellows in in rage and uh and in like uh you feel this this sense of Berg's support right in the in the anger. Um, so what is that? That gives you advantage on it, does that saving give me throws? Advantage on saving throws? What that that gives you advantage on saving throws and uh, attack rolls. Fuck, okay. I'm rolling skill check. That's okay. We can wait until okay. you're doing the wisdom save, right? You can, you can apply that. Up, That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, Ramus, what are you, you going to do? I will. And I think um, at this point, vi- visually, the axe is now floating in the air. There's a bubble of like green malignant Mara energy sort of flickering like the Corona of a cursed sun. And it's floating in this sphere in front of you. Uh, and it's clear. We see tendrils of this Mara energy flickering off of all of you to this, to the orb. And when you get involved, there's more little like tendrils. It's like a Jacob's ladder, right? The orb is shooting off these little sparks of green energy. And as you get involved, they, they shoot out to you and kind of flicker on you uh, as well. Okay. Um, but yeah, sorry, Ramus, go ahead. Mahari, we are in this together. But stand, brothers. Harmony is with you. I cast guidance on you. Give you the D4 on the roll. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. And then uh, ten, 10 pillars, do you have anything for this? Do you want to get involved in anything for this roll? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the, 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 I want to do the, the help action so he gets... Uh, mm-hmm. and I, I, hold on. I want to make sure it's ability checks. I think it's anything. Um, let me see here. Um. Yep, gains advantage on the next ability check. Okay, so that's the help action. So I will do that. Um, and do the the inspiring help, so he gets advantage plus a d six. But okay. can I make it the, the way I do it? Is um encourage uh, like like shouting at the or shouting to the uh the log log I'm sorry lawgiver. <laughs> I know it's confusing. This one's the law keeper. Oh, this is the keeper. Law keeper. Okay, the law keeper. There's a bringer, a keeper, and a wielder. This is the this is the keeper. He keeps the law. Okay. Yep. So I will shout. To, I will shout to the law keeper. Um. Uh. 
The only way out of this is through. If there's anything you can do to help Maharib take control of this, now's the time. Maharib, we're all behind you. We'll fight it together. Okay. All right. So, Maharib, you have disadvantage because you're exhausted, but it's returned back to regular roll plus a d6 plus a d4. On this first uh, for roll? Perception. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. On All right. So, perception. I'm going to roll the flat roll, then I'll roll the d6 and d4. Crit! Woo! Give me nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, good start. Let me roll right. a D6 and D4. It, the power was always within you, Mahari. You didn't need us. Uh, 28. <laughs> okay, very nice. All right. So, uh, the the weakness that you that you find is that yes, like the power of the great green worm is significant and intense, and it is bearing down on you uh, with all of the attention of a of a god. Right? This is this is massive and terrifying. Right? But it's also doing about a billion other things all at once, and it's doing all of them through a screen of protection. So you can feel that the the worm is not here in full. If you were down in the void, then you would be dealing with its full energy, but there is a bubble around the universe that you are in created by the fountain, and it's trying to get at you through that bubble, and it's making it, it's making it weak. It's got some distance, and it's doing a bunch of other stuff at once, right? Trying to break into the dwarf, uh, the dwarven archives. It is telling the necromancer king what to do. It's like, it's got a lot of irons in the fire. You are just one of them. And so its divided attention gives you an advantage that you might not otherwise have. So you all become aware of this, and uh, and then Maharib, what do you uh, what do you want to do? So you've you've used perception. So you have to use either wisdom save or a persuasion check uh, to make progress from here. Uh, what are you gonna do? Um, well, if I run with the saving throw, I get advantage from Berg, right? Berg can give you advantage on saving throw. Yes. Okay. Then yes. let's let's do the wisdom roll with advantage. And I can. You can only help once, not every turn, right? Adam, um, you can, uh, yeah. So, so the, basically you have to wait, you have to, you can help and then you have to wait a turn before you can help again. So now only bird can help okay. on this one. And then next turn, 10 pillars and Ramus or just 10 pillars or nobody or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So advantage is the dwarf helping. Do I need to roll persuasion on the last thing I said to him? No, the dwarf. So like I said, the dwarf can't help because while you're dealing with the oh, axe, the dwarf trying is to trying to close the him. doors that it's, the snake is trying to slither into. He's, he's protecting his own mind. Right. It's like I said in chat, he very cattily well, monotone. Okay. Tony said your request is noted. That's yeah, it. <laughs> right. exactly. You're right. Since, since we found out the weakness, can we like split off? and do something fighting on our own time. Meaning, like, not helping Maharib since he's, since he's all, like, spread out and that's his weakness. Like, is there something Maybe? I can do what to, do you, to, like... <clears throat> what do you want um, to do instead? Well, I'd like to try and, uh, if I can actually just talk to the, the Green Worm or communicate with the Green Worm, or whatever to try and suss out a way that we can actually use the steel or use this new material and control it. Yeah, it, you could, you could, you could try. Yeah, you could try okay. making like a perception check. Yeah, because I want to like, like try and like use that information to attack him on all fronts. And if he's defending my questions or whatever against this, blah, blah, blah. I'm hoping fucking something that works. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like a distraction. Sure. Turn. Why not? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's different. Distracting it is very different from like pursuing your own goals while you're connected to it, right? Oh, okay. Looking for secrets is you going off on your own with all of the accompanying risks that entails. Well, I'm just saying it, it has the bonus of being maybe a distraction. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, Maharib, you are going to uh, you're going to make that make that save. Yeah, with advantage. Yes. Here it is. 
20, not bad. <sighs> you, unfortunately, you do not succeed. Damn it. Uh, the wisdom save is, is insufficient. So you've Fuck, you failed once and created your success. So Berg and Mahari both suffer the backlash. So Sorry, Berg. I rolled a 20. I mean, I thought that was good. Now in, in Orcish, I'm just cursing you out, calling you a weak motherfucker. Shut up, Berg. Shut up. <laughs> So, so Maharib, uh, the, uh, the ax, uh, basically the great green worm attempts to, to break you is just like, you are an uppity servant. You do not know your place, right? Let me, let me drive you back to your knees. And so you feel the coils kind of wrap around you. Uh, you feel hands, uh, massive hands on your throat, squeezing them. And you, you feel like this thing trying to like prove to you, you can't can't fight yeah okay so Sorry. indomitable allows you a reroll. yes on saving throws okay there you go uh but i don't yeah, have do advantage it. on this right that's uh is it it's all saving know, throws so you, you, you have it's all it's, yeah so yeah. you have advantage yep okay i have two more or one more of these so and i can use it till whatever here's the here's the roll give me a crit damn it I'm going to use the last oh, one as well. This is important. To me. The, you're lucky that wasn't a, a critical fail too. like, Oh yeah. If you'd, if you'd not had advantage on that, that would have been much worse for you and Berg. They would have gone bad. Uh, so this roll counts yep. uh, with advantage. Yeah. Fuck. Same roll. Oh, fuck. God damn it. <laughs> They're both good rolls, but this is the, uh, one of the harder ones of these three for you. So, okay. So Berg and Maharib, first of all, take uh, 18 psychic damage. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> you feel you feel the thing backlash against you um and it uh yes yeah, just pain washes over you and more than pain the sense of like being subjugated right like the the point is not to hurt you but to prove to you that you only exist by the great worms uh, great green worms will right and so it's like don't make me kill you maharib like, bend this power is too great we made a bargain and you cannot change it. And you feel like this like pressure on your mind to capitulate, right? To to say, like, I'm sorry, I'll just I'll continue being a good boy. And while this is happening, um, Ten Pillars, you you want to try to sneak around and find some secrets in the mindscape of the great green worm? All right. Um yeah. oh, well, okay. someone asked in chat too, like, why would you do this? It's like it really doesn't matter. Like if I help Maharib, I'm in danger. If I try and explore this avenue of attack. I'm in danger. It doesn't matter. It's either sit out or risk getting fucked. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you have a chance to go unnoticed. So what I'm going to get you to do is roll, roll stealth, but do it with okay. charisma bonus instead of dexterity. Okay. Yeah. Um, are you not, not question mark. Mm-hmm. All right. 24. All right. Okay. All right. So you manage to uh and and yeah, this is like like you said, the the thing is distracted. It's not so much you causing a distraction, but recognizing that the great green worm is attempting to, you know, spread out from here and maybe loses track of you, right? Cuz you're the one it cares the least about. Quick question. Yeah. I use my saving throw bonus. With like cuz that's my bonus with proficiency. Oh. No, no, it's it's supposed to be so it's you're proficient in Just stealth, right? So your bonus, let me look. I am not proficient be, in stealth. Okay. So it's let me see. What you got for stealth here. I got a two. Yeah, for instead stealth. of a plus wouldn't it be a night? Yeah, instead of a plus two, it should be a plus uh a plus oh yeah. So it's actually re-roll, but roll with a um a plus two instead of a plus seven, because it's not it's not your saving throw. Can I just call it 19 or do you want me to re-roll? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Do you have a thing for stealth that lets you do that or? Oh, I see. Do it like, saying, you want to like, just, just keep well, the roll, but change the, yeah. So here's the thing. You're going to fail either way. So the re-roll is actually better for you because there's a chance you could succeed. But with oh, this, if you just use your sure. bonus, you can't. Oh. You should re-roll okay, with gotcha. the proper bonus. Gotcha. Okay. Nope. <laughs> okay. So you, you attempt to slip away. 
And I think, I think probably as you do, as your, as your mind starts to wander, right? You envision, and this is all kind of like mind palace shit. If any of you were a wizard, this would be a lot more familiar, but it's like you envision the serpent, right? Tangled up around Maharib. You envision its attention elsewhere and you envision like a secret place. It's kind of like Inception. You envision like a, a vault door or a safe. Like what do you, what does Ten Pillars think of when he thinks of something to steal from? And he thinks of the great green worm. What, what form does it take? Um, it, it takes the form of a uh, a donation box in a church, like in whatever yeah, church, okay. because he was a, I mean, poor-ish farmer, uh, farmer's kid growing up. Yeah, and he would go into the to the church of whatever was uh, nearest, and he'd see the like the donation box with a big old like padlock on it or whatever, and just imagine times when. Like what's in that box? We could, I could get out of this fucking farm. Wouldn't have to do this shit anymore. So that's what he pictures. Okay. So on the first, this first failed attempt, there's no, uh, there's no, be- no negative except that this is what happens. You envision the the box and you like sneak through the church, and as you do, we see you sneaking up to the donation box. We see the window of the short sort of stone building. And outside the window, there is an enormous green serpentine eye staring at you. We see the eye flick to you and it takes up the whole window and you you hear uh, from all around you. Not so fast. And you feel yourself uh, pulled up by the by the spine, like a spot between your shoulders, yanked away and thrown across the across the church floor. And so we see you slide and uh, the windows all shatter at once and a green mist starts to pour into the church in your mind. Meanwhile, Maharib, you are still struggling to assert dominance over the uh, over the thing. Ten Pillars has gone off on his own. So Ten Pillars, you can't help Maharib right now. Uh, you're right, you're yeah. tangled up in your own thing. Um, and then Ramus, I assume you're sticking around. You and Burger sticking around to help Maharib, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So Maharib, you have to pick again now. Uh, you can. So you just did wisdom. So you. You have to go back to uh, persuade or intimidate, whichever you prefer, uh, or you can do perception again. Uh, so, I mean, I have a negative two in the other two, so is perception just going to grant me the same thing, or is it just I have to get back to that wisdom save? Basically, what's happening is you you can pick one of the three things, but it can't be the same thing two, two turns in a row. Uh, and each ah. one is a tactic. Eventually you will have to make an attack. You'll have to like choose to intimidate or cause that's the asserting dominance, right? Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, you just, it's just, you can't keep making the same roll over and over. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I have a negative two in persuade and intimidate and a plus four in perception and a plus four in wisdom. So if this is going to grant me wisdom for the next turn, I might as well do. Is is wisdom considered an attack, or is that more of a uh, defense? No, you'll have to. Yeah, that's more just being resistant, right? Like suffering and getting through it. Um, at some point, you will have to roll one each of one thing once at least. But other than that, you can you can just keep going. Um, can, but, so can if I you want to do perception right now. now, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all in in. Well, ten pillars isn't now. Ten pillars is like at a remove because because he's snuck you know away. Say, but Berg and Ramus and Go you can. Ahead. Yeah, you can communicate. Berg, remember how I said harmony is the answer. We must combine the light with the dark. We need a strong light right now, my friend. Strike the hammer with your lit sword. Yeah. Oh, you want him to use the I'll hammer of heaven the and just smash the because we we yeah. saw this happen once and it was a whole fucking thing. So I already had this thought as a player. Harmony is the <sighs> answer. It's what yeah. he did not expect. I'm, we're not in like combat turn order, so I guess I I don't I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna light up the hammer, whisper uh my sweet nothings to the to the hammer. <laughs> And then um, light it up and strike at the uh, the thing. I'm no longer just waiting okay. the axe, so it's it's in the. No, no it's no, no, floating no. in a bubble in the middle of the, the room. Floating, yeah, yeah, the floating. Axe. Yeah, you smash it. Okay, all right. Uh, make a uh, make an attack roll. Is it? I mean, is it possible? Also, no, I can't rage while doing that. Yeah, so I'll just do an attack. Roll. You can either light the hammer up or you can rage. Yeah. 
No, no, no. The, the hammer is going to be needs to be lit. Yeah, lighting up is better. Okay. So suddenly, suddenly the the chamber the chamber is thrown into sharp contrast as the light from the hammer uh, fills the fills the room. Right, burning this burning radiance spills from the hammer. Uh, there is a, a crackling sound in the air, and um, the the shield like ripples. And then uh, Berg, you take a swing at it. Uh, and there is a terrible flash of light and uh, a crackling. Uh, I think that we see the ground under the axe, like like cracks, and we see a crack start to form. Uh, roll damage. Okay. And you start to you start to bang away at the shield. Uh, so go ahead and yeah, roll your damage. Pretty good damage. Okay, so seventeen, twenty, twenty seven, whatever. And then yeah, one d six, yeah. What up? Okay, another twelve. So what is that? Thirty something. Uh, Thirty six. Thirty six. Harmony, yes. motherfucker. All right. Okay, so the shield the shield begins to crack and waver, uh, and uh, and it's it's it holds fast, but you can take another swing, right? It's still your turn. So yep. yeah, take another swing at it. Okay, yeah, roll damage again. Mm. 23. Okay. All right, another 23. All right. Perfect. Okay, all right. So, yeah, just uh, smashing away at it, and you can see it's starting to crack. The shield is starting to, to break, but you're going to have to keep at it. So, Maharib, what are, you, what are you doing? What, are you, what role are you making? Now that everybody's off on their own, their own secret mission. Uh, I mean, I'll make my perception check again, I guess, but it's at disadvantage, right? Because it's a... It is now, uh, yes. I will... I didn't do an action, so I will give you guidance again. That's right. Okay. And then I will give you my inspiration as well, so you can use it to roll normally. Nice. Should we save that? No, because I guess I get advantage from something else. Okay. All right, so perception check. 23. With a nice. D, okay. So, D6 or D4? D4. Uh, it's a D4. 25. Okay. Perception. All right. Um, so, yeah, again, like you, um, part of, in, so in this case, part of what the Great Green Worm's weakness is, it's just like Rama said, right? It's arrogance. It's assuming that you're a one trick pony. It's assuming that you are just a, a strong arm to wield the axe and a weak will. He just assumes that you're a, you're a chump, right? You're a goon. Uh, and so if you want to take advantage of that weakness, you need to be more than that. You need to do better. You need to be more than simply a bunch of angry meat. So, uh, that is, that is another weakness of the, of the great green worm in this, in this situation. So, uh, let's, let's roll, roll back around. So 10 pillars, uh, you are lying on your back in the imagined, uh, church of your youth and the Whoa. place is filling up with, with green smoke. Uh, and you can feel the presence of the of the great this worm, this horrible baleful presence uh, filling mm -hmm. the filling the room. What are you gonna do? Okay, uh, I am going to uh, do. Uh, I'm going to do a fog cloud out of the pipe to mm -hmm. obscure the eye's vision of me. Right, yeah, to hide from it. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds good. Okay. All right. So you uh you you draw you draw from your pipe and exhale a massive cloud of uh, of fog that fills the place. And so we see we see all this like uh, dark gray fog come from the from the pipe. We see the smoke fill the room and there are tendrils of green searching for you. So for you you've bought yourself a turn as the uh as the great green worm searches for uh for this little thief. And still, somewhere in this church, there is the the symbolic box of hidden knowledge sitting uh, on a on a little pedestal on the altar um, amidst all of this this smoke. But yeah, you you've saved yourself from from a turn of being pursued. Uh, cool. Okay. Um, and that was that's a bonus right. action. Does that matter in this? Oh no, you can still do something. Yeah, totally. Excellent. Yeah, we'll, will, we'll use uh, D D's framework, even though this is a kooky mind battle. But well, yeah. If you have I'll something else, take you want to my. Do. I'll take my movement to go to make my way to the box through the cloud yep. and the yeah, robe of eyes. I don't know if it helps that. here, but I can see through the cloud. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I mean, and, the cloud's uh, a metaphor, but yes. Sure. And then I will <laughs> uh, use my action to try and, like, fucking take my dagger and jimmy open that fucking lock. Okay, so are you more focused on staying hidden or on getting the lock open? Um, getting lock open. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm relying right. on the cloud to hide me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so how about this? Let's have you make a... Hmm, in this case, because it's like a mental thing and you're not exerting force, you're trying to hide. You know what? Let's make a charisma saving throw. And because of the smoke and because of the robe of eyes, give yourself advantage. Okay. Yeah, make a charisma save with advantage. 15. Fuck. Ooh, that's not very good. All right. Uh, so you, uh, you, you dart through the fog. You take out your knife. You get down to the, the box. You, you stick it in the, the edge of the blade in the, uh, in the seam. Uh, and then you, uh, we see the, the green like a mist flow around you from behind and kind of like come up over your shoulders. And start to like suddenly uh, at, at quite quick speed, uh, suddenly fill your nostrils and like try to flow into your ears and like around your eyeballs. And it just like rushes up over you uh, and starts to, to try to consume you. Um, can you make a make a wisdom save? Oh, Yogi. Eight. OK. All right. Fuck. Unless I have advantage. advantage. Okay. What's that? I said unless I have advantage. No, no. So here's what we see outside. So these all rush in, right? And uh, from the outside, we see in the room, 10 pillars suddenly goes limp. Uh, 10 pillars, you are at zero hit points and you are now dying. Uh, okay. So Ramus and Berg and, and maybe less oh. Mahari, but Ramus and Berg, you definitely see 10 pillars seize up and then <clears throat> cough up a bunch of blood and then fall down uh, on the ground. Um, but for you, uh, 10 pillars, you are, uh, you're still in it. You're not unconscious. You're just wrapped up in the thing and it's killing you. It's killing you in the real world from, from within. So, uh, that happens. Uh, who else hasn't gone on this, this thing? Berg, you can make your attacks. Uh, and then yeah. Ramus, you can also, you can also do something if you want. All right. Attack number So one. just, just, okay. uh, before uh, we go completely off of, off of me, um, yeah, me moving through the through the fog and going towards the confession mm -hmm. box. That's what, because you said that you bought yourself around or whatever from the green. Yes, smoke. it was when I when I asked stuff, you, do you like care more? That? Do you care more about staying hidden or about opening the box? And when you said gotcha. opening the box, okay. I was like, okay, then that's yeah, what I figured. You, okay, you forego cool. the the fog. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah, which well, is yeah. like you can, you can't accomplish that if you just hide. Okay, so Berg, this swing has no effect on the uh, on the shield. You bounce bounce off of it. Yep. Yep. That one, however, that's a hit. And I'm going to use my uh, roll an extra damage die. Uh, okay. It's just another d6, right? Um, if you're doing radiant damage, or, yep. What did, yeah. Ooh. Oh, nice. I got another six. The, okay. I still haven't done the what's it called? Yeah, and then another D six plus yeah plus uh yeah plus seven. And you're not so raging. Nice. So I love that. 10, I love that ability. <laughs> Fifteen, twenty one plus whatever you're about to roll. Thirty one. Okay. Um, well, technically, I should have raged before that, but since what's done is done. All right. Range. Okay. Uh, the thing is like. You're you're hammering away at it, and you can see it cracking and starting to starting to break. Uh, you figure one more round of this solid attention. If you roll as well as you have been, you should be able to yeah. break the break the shell. Um, do we want to just? I mean, I'm gonna uh, do it at the beginning of my next turn anyway. Well, actually, you know what? I'll wait in yeah. case something. Because I think Ramus, it's turn now. Or no, Ramus has a turn. But then he helped yeah. me. Yeah, Ramus and Ramus and Mahari both have to go. This is this oh, is the okay. next one. I'm I'm yeah. judging off of Mahari. But it's like Mahari goes. Everybody else gets an action. So Ramus, what are you doing? Uh, you see, you see, ten uh, pillars fall to the ground. Yep, I'm like, you want a weapon greater than the Mara? It's the life's refusal to die or bend will. And I cast mass cure wounds on everybody, so everyone heals for eight. Mm. We stand nice. together in harmony and fight them. Sick. 
For 18, you said? Or is that eight? Yeah, yeah. everyone heals for 18. Okay. Okay. So uh so ten pillars, uh you are you are restored. Um you hear Ramus's voice, we all hear Ramus's voice echo through the fog, right? And suddenly you're like, no, I'm not done fighting, right? It it fills you with a sense of determination and purpose. Uh Harmony's power fills you. Uh Berg and Maharib, you both heal. Uh even even the old even the old dwarf uh Hasubani gets a little bit of hit points back. Maharib, what tool are you using this turn? It has to be a wisdom save or an intimidate roll. Um, well, Berg's about to smash through it, and wisdom is my highest one. So I'll make the intimidate roll next, and I'll do my wisdom roll now. Okay. Um You, I used my, or I used your inspiration on the last roll, right, Dan? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I just have to roll a flat wisdom then. <clears throat> uh, and we know I need at least a 16 or higher. Maybe even higher than that. Here's the wisdom. <laughs> it's a 17. <laughs> How's that go? Actually, no, I rolled a 20 Not last time. Bad. So it doesn't matter. Not bad. That is, uh, yeah, that's, it's not enough. Uh, so that's another tally on the fail side. So yeah, like you, again, you're trying to endure. You're trying to just like tough it out, but it's, it's not working, right? Like, like this thing has been around for literally like thousands of years. And so you, you know, in this moment, like you can't outlast it, right? Yeah. It, all it has to do is wait. And eventually you will, you will fall to your knees. Uh, and so, yeah, you, you feel, uh, a sense of your own will starting to break. Right. Um, so we're, everybody's gone this turn. So we, we restart, uh, who wants to go first? Um, 10 pillars, you are writhing around on the floor, getting wrestled by the, by the worm in smoke form. Do you want to try to break, uh, break free or what do you want to do? The box is just, just right there. And this thing is like wrestling you to the ground and trying to fill your orifices with green smoke. What are you gonna do? Uh, yes, I I, w I would like to use my action to break free of the yeah. of the smoke. Okay. Um, I'll just tell you all my intentions. I want to use my my action to break free of the smoke. Use whatever yeah. movement to get up off on my feet, and use my um 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 um, um, um on my cunning action as a yeah. bonus action to hide. Ah, nice. Okay, so you're going to use deception to try to break free. Okay. Let's do that. Nice, you do. Okay, so okay. here's the thing. And again, everything's all magic-y and, and metaphor. So it's starting to, like, squeeze you and, and, and crush in on you. What happens? Like, do you, how do you trick the great green worm in, and get free from its grasp? Um... Let's, uh, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a way I can use, like, um, cause the, the, the worm is trying to, well, you know what, how about, worms, this? how about this, the great since green I, since worms I went main, down? main paradigm is subjugation. So he's trying to subjugate you. He's trying to break your will and make you his belonging. Since I went down and I, and I yeah. went to zero. I get this healing uh, spell. I pop back up and I just play dead for for a little while, until mm -hmm. the green smoke kind of like dissipates, like it pulls back because it senses that I'm not getting up. So and here's I wait the thing: for my yeah, it's, it's metaphor in the in the world in this case is that of a giant serpent, right? So it's finished crushing you. It thinks you're dead, and it gets ready to open its jaws to swallow you. And as soon as the coils, the metaphor metaphorical coils start to loosen, you slip away into the smoke and disappear. So make yep. uh, same thing this time, uh, make a, um, I think in this case, now that you're starting to learn, you can make deception checks to try to hide too. So you can make another okay. roll of those if you want. Oh my God. Ooh, oh geez. shit. Okay. So Wait, yeah, no, no, no. you, you slip away uh, 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 17? and 17 is unfortunately not enough. You do need to okay. roll better than the 10 to get it. So okay. you hear again, all around you and everyone else recognizes this, uh, you know, you're all sort of present in the scene. You hear the, the worm say a temporary oh, setback. Oh, I'll find you. And you feel it searching for you in the cloud. And then it's, it's the weight of its attention falls on you. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Berg, you want to take another swing at the shield or Ramus, if you have something you want to do. Um, 
I would rage and then uh, swing at the shield. Okay. Get them extra plus threes. All right. Nice. That's a hit. So 26. Or six. On how much? 26? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. 20, 23 right. and then 26 without rage. Uh-huh. They're still lit, so. 26 plus 7. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, uh, and you get one more attack. It's it's still there, just barely. Oh my god! Ooh. All right, so you you swing at it, and it it strikes back this time. So you you hit it, and a jolt of necrotic energy leaps through you from your from your hand down through your body into the floor. Uh, so you're gonna take a bunch of damage. So this is necrotic. Let's see how I roll. 34 necrotic damage. Uh, and so, yeah, your, your muscles like shrivel and like you feel the moisture being sapped out of you. Uh, and it's trying to, yeah, just trying to kill you uh, as a, as a defense uh, when you swing in on it. Um, but you're still standing and it's, it's still barely holding on. Uh, Ramus, what do you want to do during this, this turn? Um, Seeing that it is weak, I'm going to try to guiding bolt the shield. Mm-hmm. Actually, okay. no. Instead, I'm going to um, I'm going to use my uh, my channel divinity to flood everything with uh, radiant light, and the sphere has to make a Constitution save or take 26 <laughs> radiant okay. or half. Get a 25. It'll take 13 radiant damage. That is enough. So here's what happens, right? Ramus, you go Super Saiyan and the fucking light bursts out from you and it it peels away what's left of the shield. So now the the axe is hanging in in space without anything around it. It's just hanging there. So Berg could take a a swing at it and, and actually hit the thing this time. Um, but that'll right, have to happen next turn. Its shields will, are its shields are destroyed. Yeah. Then I'll use my bonus action yeah. to summon the spiritual weapon in the form yeah. of a harmony weapon. I'm like, you son of a bitch. And I swing at it <laughs> with a spiritual weapon. Get a 20? Okay. Is that uh, enough? The spiritual weapon passes through it. It has no effect. Um, and actually, wow. can you make a can you make a wisdom save? Uh, I just need to see if there's another effect about casting spells on the the raw axe in this situation. But okay, so the uh, the the spiritual weapon hits the hits the axe, like flies into hits the axe, and just blows apart. It disappears, completely dissipates, and is dispelled. Okay. Yeah, uh, Maharib, uh, it's gonna be uh, intimidate. Or it's going to be a perception, I guess. But you need to make an intimidate, a successful intimidate at some point. Uh, I can't remember what you did last turn. Uh, I did a wisdom check last turn. Wisdom, that's right. So it's perception or intimidate now. Okay. Uh, We'll go back to perception. It's a plus four, but I'm rolling at disadvantage, right? Because of exhaustion? Yeah. Mm, Can I get anything fancy with an action surge? (laughs) Can I say that I take a turn to like? Yeah, I mean, you can make two rolls. Yeah. Just treat it as if you get another turn in quick succession after this one. I'm trying to think. There's no mechanics in D&D. There's no like aim in D&D, right? To where I can like spend a no, turn. No, you can like hold. And yeah, hold an action. Yeah. No, there isn't. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, if I can do action surge, could I do two perceptions in a row or? N- no, you still have, have to, to switch them else? up. So you could do perception and something else. Yeah. Fuck. I mean, I'm going to get a... Okay. I'm rolling a disadvantage on this for this perception check. Okay. 13. Okay. So here's the thing. It all it all sort of comes down to this. So you have, you have, you have not rolled uh, well enough uh, because of your exhaustion in this case to, to best the axe, right? You've, you've, it's been proven that you, you can't fight it. It's, it's the boss of you. And if you want to keep wielding it, you're going to have to bend the knee, right? So you, you come face to face with this thing, but in reality, the ax is wide open. It is just hanging there in space. 
one of two things needs to happen here now. So either Maharib accepts that he is the the instrument of the uh, the great green worm and takes the axe as a loyal servant, right? Continuing to be its wielder, continuing as things were, but now knowing, right? Knowing for sure you came face to face with the axe and we figured out who's the, who's the boss. Or Berg, you can hit the axe as hard as you can with your hammer and we see what happens. I'm going to leave that up to you as players. Put me in. Put me in. Because I mean, that's your Because here's the thing, right? Because here, as players, I think I want to talk about this because I don't want to rob JP of a a potential interesting future moment. So if you destroy the axe, Mahari will know that this is an an unprovable, like, it's like you, you failed and then Berg will take away your chance to ever try again, right? It's like Maharib failed and I had to save him. Right. If you break the, if you, if you swing in on the ax and try to break it or whatever, uh, or Berg, we, you can, you can hold the blow, which means Maharib is back under the yoke of, uh, of the, the great green worm. And, and that's it. Right. Like, and, and you, we all acknowledge, like you tried and failed. Well, that's up to you, Berg. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Oh, I was I was going to wait to see what you wanted to, as a player, I guess. I don't know if that's what we want to do at all. But I think it's more interesting Berg would, would, in character. For sure. Yeah, then let's do that. Berg would want to destroy the axe. Yeah, that's what I figured. Okay. Because it's yeah. proven so Berg, that you it, see, it, it, now what is, is it? too much of a liability. Right, so that's the question, right? Is what is the, what is the, the reasoning for this? Is it you see Maharib falter and you, you leap in to help? Or is it... Yes. Ramus told you to break the break the axe. Like what? What guides no. your your hand in this moment? No, this this harkens back to Berg watching the axe slowly have its power and sway over Maharib. Maharib constantly being in denial, saying that he doesn't have you know that he's got it under control. He'll be careful, and this is just a manifestation of of complete con- like lack of control and the the void showing it to be more of a liability and a, a source of arm towards Maharib and the rest of us. So that's what it is. It's, it's not, it's, it's some, it's playing off of what Berg has already been keeping an eye on. So this is like, no more, this is the climax, no more of this ax, fuck this shit. Okay. All right. Uh, well, you don't say okay like that? Just, <laughs> just hang in there. I, I just wanted to make sure I understand. So here's the, here's the, here's the order in which these things happen. You don't have to roll. It's just hanging out in the open, right? It'd be really fucking stupid if I was like, Make an attack roll. And after all that, you're like, I roll and I miss it, I guess. <laughs> so <laughs> you see it there. You see the, the, the weakness, you know, in your mind, like all you got to do is take a swing. You, I mean, what does it look like? Don't, don't say what happens after you hit it, but what is, what describe the moment of Berg coming up and doing the thing. And then I'll, I'll tell you what happens after. Unless Berg <laughs> grabs the ax. <laughs> So I wasn't going to mention it, but yeah, you like, you choke up on the hammer and you're like, I could ju-. And then, and then the Boromir sets in and you're like, but wait, the vision I had. It is a gift. Yeah. It is a yeah. gift. <laughs> what if I reach out and grab the axe myself? I think, no, I, I think what happens is you see him get ready to, to, to smack it. And for a moment he stops and it flashes back to that, that vision of him having wielding both of them. Uh-huh. And for a moment, it looks like he's going to like maybe grab it, but he doesn't, he goes and destroys it because he ultimately feels that that vision was conjured by the ax and it's not right. necessarily true. Yeah, yeah. You can't trust it. Well, and the, the other, the other yeah. way you could, you could look at this too would be like, another thing would be like, if we wanted to really make this a big tease for the audience would be like, Berg reaching for the axe, grabs it by the haft, and then just slams the slams two weapons it, yeah. together. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I like, I like the idea. You don't even want to touch it. You're just like, wait, I could. Uh, no. And then you, yeah, you swing it. You on all it. So, see that though. You all see him stop for a second and like his expression, and everything changes. Maybe it's the, the axe's influence under him. Maybe it's him, a combination of that, you know, of, of him just thinking back to that vision. Whether or not you know yeah. that's what he's thinking about. Well, and um, everybody, the thing is, remember, you're all mentally linked. So everything you're feeling and thinking. Yeah, so you're feeling everything you're so feeling, I guess. Yeah. You get total access to why Berg does what he does. So yeah, you yeah. you you swing in with the, the hammer. The hammer strikes the axe. There is a brilliant and terrible flash of both radiant and necrotic energy that blasts out in a bubble, hits everything in the room. Everything goes bright white. 
10 pillars, you feel immediately the eye of the great serpent turn away from you. Like what the fuck is going on over there? And the box is just sitting there on the pedestal. You want to make one final lunge for it before all of this falls apart? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. All right. So I want to tell a, you. Oh! <laughs> yeah. Make a, uh, let's see. You're going to lunge for it. Make a uh, dexterity saving throw. I think. Okay. Yeah. Let's have you just, just physically. Cause you know, would you get a 14? 14. Okay. Uh, buddy's distracted, so let me let me roll to see if he notices. I don't want to double this. It's far here because he's distracted. Let's see. All right, last question for you. Uh, you can do one of two things. You can you lunge for it. He's still got some last tendril of attention on it. You can mm-hmm. grab it and suffer the consequences, or you can stop and let the whole thing fade. Let him take his secrets away with him. Grab it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you, you lunge for it. You pass through the green smoke, you shove your hand in and it goes right through the surface. Cause again, the box is a metaphor and whatever you find within it's knowledge. It's not a physical thing. And you, you draw it forth. And, um, I think that the arm that you pull out of the box and you, you have to go in about like, you know, just, just past your elbow. Uh, it is, um, like, you're cursed basically the arm becomes like black uh your veins show like green through the skin your hands become the your hand becomes like a gnarled claw you can still use it but uh it is clear that you have been touched by the mara you have a weird tiefling arm uh and it's just horrible pain as you like ah, yank back uh your your twisted hand yeah well i think this is what you like after all that struggle and stuff you see the like the hand like start to turn black and he starts screaming in pain. But then the scream yeah. of pain, like look, he looks directly up at the fucking where where the eye is or used to be, and just starts laughing directly at the fucking serpent. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I got it. I got your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so we watch from with with horror in the real world as uh as Ten Pillar, yeah, is from from the tip of his finger down to his elbow, the arm gnarls and twists into a uh, uh, a claw. Uh, and uh, yeah, pain just like racks your body. But we can hear him laughing and everybody gets just a taste of that madness as it happens. And as Berg strikes the axe, right, because the, the eye and its attention turns away as it sees Berg coming. It's like, wait, no, not. Th-. And then you hit it. Uh, there's the bright flash. Everything is overwhelmed. And uh, as the uh, as the the light fades, as we return to being able to see <laughs> the lawbringer, uh, first of all, is or lawkeeper uh, is sitting in his throne and there's a big metal sliver of axe stuck in his throat and just blood like gushing down the front of him. Uh, and he's just lying there like dead. Um, Berg, you're lying on your back. There's a big burn mark on the floor. Um, everybody got knocked down and in the center of the burn mark, there is a pile of, uh, sh- of shattered ax and pieces of the hammer of heaven. You. Oh dick. no. You fucking absolute asshole. He took your hack master plus 12. Oh no. <laughs> I should have chosen the dark side. I should have grabbed the axe for myself and seized its power. Damn you. <laughs> so nobody you. is unconscious. I hate you. You're, <laughs> you're all recovering. And this is, this is what you see, right? Like there is the, the hammer has, the hammer has paid the price. The axe is shattered, but so goeth the hammer of heaven. And there are pieces of both scattered on the, on the floor, chunks of, of heaven metal and, uh, and the dark steel of the void. And, uh, and yeah, Maharib, you, you came up against the power of the worm and failed, uh, you know, uh, Berg, you, you saved your friends, but, at a great cost to yourself, uh, ten pillars. You have uh, you have in your mind some secret of the Mara, which we'll we'll get into. But yeah, and and the the lawkeeper, and I think that the, the little like all the little um, servitors, the homunculi dwarves, the ones with the their mouths sewn shut, they're all dead too. They died along with their master. A heart plug. We all get them here. <laughs> <laughs>
What are you going to do? Did we get like blown back or are we all just kind of standing? Everybody got knocked down. So this yeah. is the aftermath of the explosion. People are starting to kind of like sit up and look around and re everybody's realizing what's just happened. Probably like an eerie yeah. silence. Well, I, yeah, I think there's a pretty things. complete silence. And then Mahari breaks the silence and just <laughs> way to go, Ramus. Great idea. <clears throat> you made the choice to stand up to it. And you freed your shackles. We have nothing. Not true. <sighs> we have something. You're free now, Maharib. That is something. Someone gotta help the dwarf. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, I if there's anything that anyone wants to attempt in the moment, we can. But I think that this is one of those, like, big action and then denouement of, like, several scenes afterwards. But, yeah, if you want to try to, I mean, here's the thing, right? Like, Ramus, yeah, you could try to, like, revivify or revive or whatever. But, like, his its soul is dead. Like, he's killed by a shard of, of like, void metal. There's no there's no bringing this dwarf back. His, his death mean, is... The thing permanent. is, too, we I, could have tried to bring him back, but we don't want to commit any more crime. So it's like, it's true. I, yep. <laughs> I wanted Sorry. to do one cool Sorry. thing just to see if it would finally yeah. work. And I want to use divine intervention to merge the two weapons together. Mm. And see if that okay. is possible. This yeah. never works, though. I'm What's not excited chance? at all. OK, <laughs> fail. <laughs> OK, so oh, yeah, the, I was going to say. <laughs> The, the shards lucky, lucky. don't automatically knit themselves together, but <laughs> remember, so, so 10 pillars, the treasure 10 pillars was trying to steal from the mind of the great green worm was a safe way to use the void metal to make weapons. So while you don't necessarily understand the secret yourself, if you could I find brought. someone say capable of, of creating magic weapons, you have, you have the recipe now and you have the mats. You just need somebody with the skills. To make it work. Yeah. We have we're not gonna just leave the pieces <laughs> of everything there. Like we'll probably grab that stuff. They just get a broom and little, sweep them off the I just sorry. And... <laughs> <laughs> we have earned the freedom, Maharib. And that in and of itself is something to be lauded. But I journeyed into mind space where I was alone. I found something, something we can use. The metal these dwarves are mining, I may have a way, I may have found a way for them, for anyone, to use the metal safely. I have this knowledge, but I, I, I don't know how to use it. I need to find some sort of weaponsmith or perhaps We could use the help of a god. And I look at Ramus's handprint on his face. Yeah, and I, I think, think, I think when one. you say that, you look over at Ramus, uh, the door, the, the massive door into this chamber, uh, we, we cut to the door and the door bursts open and a bunch of dwarves and like the heavy plate and the masks and the halberds, they all come like, huh, 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 like marching in and you hear them coming down the, the gangplank. Uh, the archways are now, they're now off. There's about, I don't know, like a dozen of them. And they're, yeah, they're like hustling towards you uh, down this, this platform. Now, if you have a way to like just bail out, 
now is now is the time to pull that ripcord. Otherwise, these dwarves are going to be like, you're under arrest for killing our dude, I, and they're going to drag you away to jail, and then we'll have to deal with that whole thing. I I I tell Berg and Mahari pick up the pieces quickly. Yeah, I I pick up the pieces. Did you tell grab us, my hand, all of you? Well, did you tell us that you did this, Ramus? Because I know exactly what you're about to do. Did you tell the group <laughs> that you did this? Yeah. Yes, I told us there was a way back. I didn't like necessarily say lay it out. Ow. Yeah. Yeah, I grab. I grab the pieces of the hammer of heaven. I grab mm-hmm. fucking you, you grab a hand. piece out of the guy's neck. <laughs> yeah, my assumption. Right. Yeah, who who is the one that has to yank the piece of of void steel out of the dude's jugular? Can we just get one off the ground? Do we have to yank that? No, no. One? You, if you want all the, I assume Ramus was like, get all the pieces. Don't just leave. Yeah, get all of them. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, as much I as you think, can get. Then I I'll be I'll, the last one. I, I'll go up to the dwarf, and I'll and I'll mm-hmm. grab it out. Yeah. So what about you, the you, you with my you, cursed you, hand. You your, yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. Right. Your gnarled claw, and you yank it out, and uh, the the body convulses once looks at you, you see your reflection in the shiny, blood-spattered uh, uh, brass eyes, and from his cracked, ancient lips, he says to you, before he dies, he says, this isn't over. And then the body goes limp. And uh, I say, uh, in, uh, what was the name of the, of the, the, is it the Traveler's Pocket that we were stealing out of to get a Oh, life? the Messenger, yeah. The messenger. I'll, I'll uh, put my hand my non-cursed hand on the dwarf's head. Yeah. Onto the messenger you go in dwarven. Mm-hmm. And then okay. you go back so, to yeah, Ramus. Uh, Ramus, everybody's like scrambled up the, they've got the pieces uh, gathered okay. up in a, a bag or whatever. I utter the word and we are whisked away back to the Whoop. sanctuary, uh, to the fire, uh, the cultist place where we just came from. <laughs> awesome. I, yeah. yeah. The, the fortress of the embers. Okay. I think, yeah. Embers. I think the final shot is you finish the spell. You peer back in the embers. You realize Maharib's not there. Oh shit! Because <laughs> Maharib is an unwilling creature. So the mm-hmm. yeah the the spell takes place and suddenly just pulls you uh, away. And when we snap back, kind of like warp space, yeah, it's it's the the three of you and no Maharib. And then we yeah definitely cut to black there. Awesome. <laughs> Fucking god damn it gotta be the difficult you fucking problem child motherfucker. Hey man. <laughs> I'll explain gotta be a uh, maybe I won't. I sat there and thought about it for a while. So what a fucking episode. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I didn't expect that episode today. Thanks, guys. Yep. <laughs> that was a doozy. <coughs> All right. Uh let's do some shout outs. Zeke, why don't you start us off? All righty. Well, thank you guys for tuning in uh, every week. Uh, thank you to Max, Dan, Adam, and JP for being uh, my my cohorts on this fucking wild ride. That is Court of Swords. Uh, if you want to find me, you can you can uh, follow me at or slash Ezekiel underscore I I I on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, I will be on Drop Frames tomorrow, and uh, then after Drop Frames. Um, I might do a little broadcast where we um, come up with what's what's to come uh, this week on my channel. And that is four days, four full fucking days to make up for the ones I missed of Indie Sundays. So it's going to be just four days of Indie Days or, or of Indie Games back to back to back. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is going to be all Indie all day. So uh, maybe we uh, tomorrow we go through the game suggestions after Drop Frames. And see what uh, what's on the what to put on the menu. So that's what's coming up. Uh, thank you guys, and we'll see you next time. Awesome stuff, Max. Do some shout outs, please. <sighs> Who fucking cares anymore? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it seems like he would have rather died than lose that fucking hammer. No, I'll talk about it in the post show. I'm saving, you know, processing what happened in in the post show. But thank you for watching. 
hell of an episode, regardless of what actually happened and like the consequences we have to deal with. I hope you guys really enjoyed it because I absolutely enjoyed it playing it with the with the rest of them as well. Um, yeah, but I am Gassy Mexican here on Twitch, Variety Caster. Um, all my stuff is, let's see if I get it right the first time there. If you're interested in any of my stuff, I'm probably going to be streaming a little bit. Sleepy Boy stream, um, playing some more GTA 5 and probably finishing our playthrough of that. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Fucking hell. <laughs> awesome stuff. Dan, some shout outs, please. I am Dan's gaming variety streamer. I'm currently uh, finishing up a Dragon Age Origins replay about halfway through the game. Uh, I should finish that up in the next couple days. It's been super fun. This episode was nuts, like absolutely crazy. So much shit went down, and I can't wait to see how we clean up this giant mess that was just made. And we'll see what happens next week. Cool, cool. Uh, I'll do shout outs here real quick. Tomorrow we got drop frames, as mm -hmm. Zeke said, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we got to find, I, we have some stuff to talk about. We got games to talk about. Uh, and then after drop frames, we'll be jumping back into The Witcher until about, I think, 7 p.m. Eastern. I got to go pick up the dog. And then me and Max are going to be jumping into some Anno 1800 uh, co op tomorrow evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. We hope to see you guys there for that, as we haven't played uh, since a considerable amount of uh, updates. So I'm curious to see what all that looks like uh more witcher thursday and friday saturday we got far verona then just more witcher until we head on to next week as the schedule uh will once again be the same so we hope to see you guys back yeah see you guys back here for quarter swords next tuesday at 6 p.m eastern adam do some shout outs for us i would love to thanks for coming everybody um make sure oh yeah i'm a slideshow look at me uh, make sure to check out community.itmejp.com for the Q&A thread. Uh, I've just put that up, and I will post it again in chat because, I don't know, I'm nice, and you can click on it and go ask me questions. Um, thanks to the cast for fucking keeping me on my toes today. Like was pointed out earlier, I had to pretty much wing the whole second act, so that's always fun. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at SkinnyGhost or twitch.tv slash Adam Coble, where I'm mostly doing RPG stuff. I occasionally do... Magic the Gathering streams. I've been playing a little bit of Star Citizen lately, which has been really fun. But mostly it's GM prep, RPG stuff uh, over at my own channel or on the D&D channel or right here, Court of Swords or Far Verona. So that's it for me. Uh, let's, let's hand out some experience points. Sweet. So this is going to be an interesting one. Let me look at the goals. So let's see here. And I need my calculator because there is an amount of... Math to be done. All right. I have the tools at the ready. So let's start with Ramus. So Ramus, you worked on locating Southern Wind. Mm -hmm. You worked on learning about Dwarven religion. Uh, it wasn't the focus, but you learned some bits and pieces about how Dwarven spirituality works. Uh, and I think you worked on pieces. convincing Maharib that harmony is the future, right? I think you, I think you worked on all three. Um, yep. So... Let's see, that's times, you're level 15? Uh, 15, yeah. Yeah, so 2,250 for Ramus this turn. Okay. Uh, and then we can talk about changing those up for next time if you want. Uh, Berg, you worked on locating Southern Wind. You kept the Ember's home secret. I think that you kept it safe. I think that was tested hard yeah. enough, and you sacrificed enough to definitely qualify that one for being done. Okay. So that was... Mm -hmm. Uh, medium, so let's go times two plus, what's your uh, working on amount? It's 750? Yeah. 750, yeah. Okay, so you get 6,350 today, Berg. Right. 6,350 for Berg. Uh, Maharib, you completed your goal of understanding the power behind the axe. Okay. It's, that's, it's done. You did it. Uh, so that is... It'll be a big one. Right? Two. It's a big, yeah, it's a pretty big one. Uh, and then you guided the group through the mountains. I think. Like, I think that qualifies. You you led them and there's dwarves. I don't think you led them to the to the place you were trying to go, but, but there's you maintained no more group anymore. So Yeah, right. So you I think let's do working on for that one. Okay. So that one's 750. And then you worked on locating Southern Wind. So that is 10,100 experience nice. this session. Yep, 10,100 for that one. Uh, and uh, 10 pillars. You Now yours is 600 for the... Or is 700, it 700 for you. Oh, 700 for you. Okay. 
All right. Yep. So you worked on finding the Court of Swords, Cadre. Um, mm-hmm. You convinced the dwarves. I think in a roundabout way, you succeeded at convincing the dwarves the threat is real. I was, gonna, I was wondering about that, yeah. But the thing is, they're probably going to be like assassins, right? Like, Adikor is fucked by you running away, but they're going to think that you are agents of the void come to kill their, their leader, right? And they should never have let you in. And yeah, I think it worked. It didn't, you didn't mean it to work this way, but I think it we still didn't did. Mean to um, kill, we didn't kill their leader. Uh, yeah, right. Well, everybody bailed except Maharib. So guess who's getting pilloried for that? Uh, so let me see. That was medium. Okay, so you've got a working on, you've got a completed medium goal, and then uh, find out how the dwarves are dealing with the Mara threat. You did that too. Uh, they were going to fight fire with fire, uh, so to speak. So that's another 2,500. So 7,500 for 10 pillars. That is a ding for, for me. Nice. So 10 pillars is level 15. Berg is level 16, right? Level 16. Yep. I had 16 as well. Maharib 16. Hot damn. Yeah. Nice work, everybody. Good job. Ramus, so you got to be close, right? Ooh, cool. I'm like 5,000 away. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So a few more sessions. Cool. So uh, lots of, lots of new goals. Um, does anybody, let's, let's go back through them so that I have a little bit of, of stuff to prep. So Ramus, do you know at least like one goal for, for next time? Do you want to keep convinced yeah. Maharib? Uh, I, I th- I'm going to remove that because I don't know where he is. Like, I don't. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, uh, he's gone now. Put it on the back burner. Yep. So uh, I want one of the goals to be forged. Uh, get two weapons of harmony forged. Um, mm, for okay. Berg. Great weapons of harmony. From the ruined axe and hammer. Okay. And then. Um, find. I guess. Find out what happened to Maharib. Sure. Yeah. Well, okay. and you can leave the other one and think about it if you want. Does the spellcaster yeah. know when someone says no to the spell? Like, would he just inherently yes. know yeah. that? Yeah, he'll arrive. He'll yeah. arrive, and okay. he'll know that you chose not to come with them. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, and you do you know what you want your third goal to be, or should we just leave that one for now? Uh, leave it blank for now. I can't think of one. Okay. All right. Uh, Berg, do you want to? Do you have ideas for what you want your goals to be, or do you want to wait? Um, one of them is definitely going to be, I'm just going to call it replace destroyed weapon. Um, I don't want to get too specific. Yeah, right. Exactly. That covers everything. Replace the hammer. <laughs> yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I, I assume you mean replace it with something significant, not like just get any old weapon. Yeah. I, I Something significant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If I just pick up a weapon, I'm not going to be like, Hey, give me the goal. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then what do you want your, do you know what you want your other two goals to be? Or do you want to hang on to those? Um, I'll hang on to him right now. I might need a little time to think. Okay, we can workshop him at the beginning of the out. session. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's okay. fine. I'll- um, because I because I know you, JP. I assume you don't want to tell us what any of your goals are. <laughs> uh, no, I was gonna. I I don't have any because I mean I'm gonna have to act it out regardless in front of the group. It's not like I'm gonna say take your headphones off or anything. That would be lame. I think. Yeah. Um. So mm-hmm. well, they're pretty basic because I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. Okay. Uh, the first one is just successfully communicate with the dwarves. I don't speak dwarven, so. <laughs> oh, that's right. Find a way to communicate with the dwarves. Yeah. I forgot about that. The only person that got left behind, they're going to be wrinkle, yelling at yeah. you in dwarven. Yeah. They're going to be like, no hobla, motherfucker. Yeah. It, it's fine. You can communicate through the, the guy that we... J- oh, right. Yeah, well, that's the thing. We killed that guy, so I'm going to have to basically be able to talk. I'm probably going to be sins between or before one of the other law people, so I guess we'll see how that goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. And then, I don't know, like, I'm fairly certain that i met death's door in some manis- manifestation so like don't die is a goal <laughs> like, i don't know how else to phrase yeah, like that survive survive the prison or survive whatever's gonna happen i think just survive okay. right because it's a goal you'll never you can't accomplish it no one no one will survive forever but you can continue to work on getting out of here alive uh so do you want to like do you want to have it that way like get out of the yeah let, let's the just say like because I, um, I don't necessarily want to get out but i don't necessarily know what my goal is in the sense of like survive dwarven justice um <laughs> survive whatever the dwarves uh have prepared or something like that okay 
and we can workshop. I'll I'll think about it between now and then. Yeah, that's fine. These are these are good placeholders. Yeah. So yeah, just just get through whatever the dwarves are gonna try to do to me alive. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, and then I you is locate um uh, southern wind still like a possibility, or should I just make a third one? It depends, right? You're you're choosing the goal means that it matters to you. So it's something that Maharib could still do. Yeah. I don't know if you're gonna do it next session necessarily. Yeah, that's but. the thing. Yeah, um, I'll leave oh. the third one open for now. Now you also know here's just like a side one as a personal goal for Maharib. You know that there is another Goliath in I their do. prison right now. It, that's might have been why I stayed behind, Adam. <laughs> do you want to make a goal of like meet meet the other prisoner? Yeah, right? yeah, meet find the, other Goliath, find the Goliath. Yeah, yeah. Uh, My third goal, Adam, will be uh, yep. heal Ten Pillars' arm. Find a way ah, to cure his okay. arm. It's like you're reading my character sheet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. And then, yeah, for you, 10 pillars, uh, what do you want your goals to be for next time? Uh, find a way to deal with my cursed arm. And that means, like, whether I, ha- whether I can get it healed or I have to cut it off or whatever. So your, your homework for the next episode is watch the classic 90s film, Idle Hands. Nice. Uh, yeah. And, uh, just, you know, just try to channel your inner Seth Green for the next. No, now, he's that, Seth please. Green. Who is uh, Jennifer, Jennifer Love Hewitt? <laughs> Who's Jennifer Love Hewitt? She's in that movie, that right? Army of Darkness. <laughs> yeah, Army of Darkness. Exactly. I forgot who read, else. I read a that. copy of Farewell to Arms. Uh, ah, and then. Ah, ah. Beautiful. But only right. read half of it because you only need one. Oh, Jessica Alba. That's what it was. <laughs> Jessica Alba. Farewell to Arm. Yep. Yep. Okay. So find a way to deal with your cursed arm. Um, what else do you want to do? Find, find someone who can forge the void metal weapons. Okay. And then um, we'll we'll keep find the quarter swords cadres cadre because we might need to. Okay. Adam, is it? Were we still mind melded? Were we still on the mine boat uh, when Zeke was talking about the um, way to forge the weapons, or was that something that he only knows? That's something only he knows. Okay, yeah. good. I'm yeah. glad we clarified. He, he grabbed that as the connection was being uh, broken. Cool. Okay, so I will leave that goal for you. Perfect. All wow, right. Two of our shits might might coincide there, Ramus. Like if we can figure out how to uh, forge the void metal and stuff. Yeah. And cure my arm. Hey. Yeah. I mean, you do yeah. have a forge, so you got that going for mm-hmm. you. Goal, bros. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I guess you actually do have Vani who can take, you know, Agni can kind of. Yeah, Vani can channel uh, Agni too. So, but we don't know if that's like allows her to craft because we've Agni. You might have to find another way to like physically, um, like uh, channel Agni like into a physical form because I don't know right. if she can do it. But we'll figure it out. That's what the whole next episode. You're gonna have an opportunity to deal with that. So, cool. All right, we'll call it there. Thanks everyone so much for watching. What was. It's one of those days where it's like, oh, we got to do a normal episode of Court of Swords. Let's go talk to... Oh, my God. <laughs> what is Surprise. happening? What is going yeah, on? Yeah, no. I, I took a turn. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to go Let talk about Let me just turn on the kitchen show. light. Oh, shit. Another dimension. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go talk about it in the uh, Patreon post show. If you want to watch that, it's over at patreon.com slash roleplay. We'll get it posted here in about 45 minutes from now. Thank you so much for watching. We will be back next Tuesday. I believe we're all here. So we'll see you at 6 p.m. Eastern. We're out. Have a good one. Bye-bye.